All right. I like to start all my videos out by saying, all right, how else do we start these things? We're going to do 13.3, day three. That means we're taking three days on one section to teach you how to factor because there were there's several different methods and different reasons why sometimes we have to use a different method. So if you were in my class, I would do this part right here as a review and go over everything we've learned so far just to make sure we're all on the same page. Anyone that was absent can have a quick review here. But for the sake of the video and to keep it a little bit short, I'm going to ask you if you don't know how to do these things to go back and watch the videos. Adding polynomials and subtracting was 13.1 and 13.2 video. Multiplying polynomials, we did one like this on the video where there's three of them, was our 13.1 to 13.2 video. And that one I just have to FOIL the first two and then take that number and FOIL with the last one. A little bit of a challenge problem. If you're in my class, you might see something like that again on something important, just FYI. And then the last thing, factoring, or I like to say unfoiling, helps us remember it. 13.3 day one video. That's where you're going to find that. I am going to do the first two just to kind of get us going and into this. If I take two factors of 40 that are going to add together to give me 13, I am going to think right off the bat, for me anyway, that 8 times 5 gives me 40, and negative 5 plus negative 8 is going to give me negative 13. So I can say y minus 5 times y minus 8. That's our simple factoring method. I'm going to write simple here. That's the easiest one. The second easiest one is when I get to one like this where my first coefficient, the number in front of my x squared, is not 1. It's something different. So if the first thing I'm going to check and say, well, is there a greatest common factor? Is there something I can pull out of every number here that goes into each one of those? And it, there is. It's 3. So if I pull a 3 out and now divide every term by 3, I have x squared plus 3x minus 10. And now I can factor what's left on the inside. And just If you watched my last video, I say this is like your friend at lunch that won't go away, and you try to ignore them. So we're going to ignore them, but they're still there. Okay. And then we take two factors of 10 that I can get positive 3 in the middle. So two things to multiply to give me negative 10, but add to give me positive 3 would be x minus 2, x plus 5. And quick check. 5 minus 2 is 3, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. So my answer, because my friend at lunch didn't go away, still here, is 3 times x minus 2 plus x plus 5. All right, let's look at this one. All right, first thing I check for, there's not a 1, so I can't use my simple method. Next thing I check for is, is there a common factor between those three numbers? Dang it. There's not. That means that method is out of the question. So now I need a new method, which I'm going to guess this might be the most watched video that we have. I'm going to do the box method to solve a problem like this. This is how it works. Just like factoring was unfoiling, box method, which is still factoring, is ungardening. You remember the garden method? when we could take something and multiply them in a box and come out with an answer. I'm trying to find, see if I have a little scrap paper here. With I did a garden method just a minute ago. Maybe I can, nope. Uh, look back on your notes then. Let's do that. If you haven't seen the garden method, oh, I found it. It's in the garbage, I'm a garbage digger. Don't anyone tell anyone that I just did that. All right, here's the garden method. So let's pretend like we have everything inside the box make our little box here, and I have 2a to the fourth. Oh, look, gross. There was even a drink on it. Minus 20a squared, but it is worth it to my students to dig in the trash. Minus 4a, minus 3a, 30a, and 6. That was what was in this box right here. Do you see that? I'm going to cover up some of this extra work so I don't confuse you. Now, let's say I had all that information, but I needed to find out the factors that went on the outside. 
I'm not going to tell you the answer yet, but to get something in this box, it has to be those two numbers right there have to multiply to give me that. These two have to multiply to give me that. And those two have to multiply to give me that. So all of those numbers have to have a common factor. All of these numbers have to have a common factor. And if I go up like this, they would have a common factor. And I would factor out the common factor on each of them to get my numbers, to get me back. Now that's kind of just a quick overview of the box method. Now we're going to see how it works exactly. For simple factoring, I needed to find two factors of C, my last term, that added up to B, my middle term. So two factors of C that added to B. That's how I did this simple method right here. For the box method, I actually need to find two factors of A times C that will add to B. What is that saying? That means I need to take, let's look at this one, A times C, 5 times 8, and then find two factors of that number that will add to negative 22. So there's just one additional step here. Hint, this also works for simple factoring because A times C is C. Why? If you remember simple factoring, what was A? It was just 1. So this would be 1 times C is C. That's why that still works. We just didn't show you that's what we were really doing. So let's look at this problem. What is A times C in this problem? Or in redneck, redneck terms, what is the first number times the last? So what is 5 times 8? That's just 40. So let's put that right here. What number am I trying to get in the middle? I'm trying to get negative 22. So now, just like I did simple factoring, I'm going to say, what factors of 40 give me negative 22 in the middle? So if I take 40, and I have 1 and 40, 2 and 20, 4 and 5, oh, sorry, 8 and 5. And I'm going to stop right there because I already saw the one. And since this is kind of old now, I'm not going to keep going. But I can see that 2 and 20, if I go negative 2 and negative 20, I can get my middle term. Now notice, remember my middle term has an x by it? So I'm going to put negative 2x and negative 20x. I have to add those two numbers together to get me my middle term. So let's circle that. Now on to our next page. Now we insert those numbers into our box like this. You're going to become very familiar with this box. And I'm going to fill it in using the equation I was talking about. 5p squared minus 22p plus 8. When we fill in our box, we always put our first term in this box right here. Notice first term. So my first term is 5p squared. I just copy it down. 5p squared. It's just a little mark on my paper. It's not anything right there. Then I put my, let's go diagonal, put my last term in this box. So my last term is my c. That's just 8. Now here's the trick. It says middle, middle. So how do I know which one I put in which? Remember, I'm trying to use negative 2x and negative 20x. That's what you told me on the other page that I should use. Do you think it matters if I put negative 2x here or if I put it there? It actually doesn't. So I could, it's going to come out the same either way. And if you don't believe me, I want you to try it both ways. But I'm just going to put those two terms in my box in any, either one of those squares. But don't forget your x. It's not just negative 2 and negative 20. It's negative 2x and negative 20x. So negative 2x, negative 20x right here. And I put a little note here to remind you, middle terms can go in either box. The order does not matter. Now we factor out the greatest common factor out of each column. So I already did it for you, but let's look down here. Here's my same box. So this is the same thing I just did right there. Oh, shoot, I put P's instead of, or I put X's instead of P's. Forgive me. Sometimes I just like X a lot. Okay, there we go. So if I take 5P squared, let's cover up this other column, and negative 2P, what is the greatest common factor between those two numbers? It's just P. So I take that, and I go up my column, and I write it right above it. This is where I get into my gardening backwards. 
Bear with me. I'll turn this back on. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm going to take the other side of the box right here, and I have negative 20p and 8. Well, the greatest common factor between those two is negative 4. Now, here's the question. How do I know if I put negative 4 or positive 4? Because this one's positive and that one's negative, so how do I know it's negative 4? Well, here's the trick I've learned. If you're coming up the row and you're factoring, the last number you hit, the number on the outside, is negative, then you pull out a negative. That's just a simple rule right there. So across the columns, I pulled out a P and a minus 4. Now I just have to do the same thing across the rows. So now i just got to go this way, and I pull out a greatest common factor, and I'm using 5P squared, and I'm using negative 20P. So on this one, if I come straight across, my last number I touch is positive, so I don't have to pull out a negative, and I am going to pull out a 5 and a P right here. All right, let's look at the bottom row. So I have a positive 8 and a negative 2p. Now notice if I come across, I touch this negative 2 last. So I'm going to pull out a negative 2 because that's the greatest common factor between those two. So what does that leave me? The final result is I just would write p minus 4 times 5p minus 2. Now, there is a guess and check method out there going around, but sometimes I think that takes a long time trying to just guess and check. I would much rather just set up a box and quickly solve it. Now, explain how to find the middle terms of the box method to a partner, or if you're at home, let's go bore your little sister with this, or your little brother, or actually your mom and dad. Maybe then they can actually help you on your homework if you tell them how to do it first. So I hope you paused the video and did that. Let's go down here and try the box method now three times. And the best thing during this practice, the, the box method part, is that you should really pause this, do it on your own, and then watch and see if you did it correctly. So the first thing I'm going to do is find out what A times C is. My first times my last is negative 6. And I need two factors of negative 6 that are going to give me a positive 1 in the middle. So 2 and 3, 1 and 6. I'm going to use 2 and 3. If I'm trying to get a positive 1, this is going to be positive and this is going to be negative. All right, so how do I fill in my box? Now that i found my middle terms, here's my box. First term goes here. Last term goes here. And then I put negative 2t, because that's one of my terms. And then I put a 3t right there. Now I just need to factor both columns and both rows. So let's look at the column on... Ooh, had a hair on that. Gross. Digging in the garbage. You guys are going to be really impressed by me. Okay, so between 3t and negative 3, I need a factor up this way. And so the common factor is 3, and it's positive, because my last number I touched was, was positive, so it's positive. Now let's factor this column. I have 2t squared and negative 2t. So I'm going to pull out a 2t. So this is a positive 3, so I can put a positive right there. All right, let's go across this row. 2t squared and 3t. My common factor is just a t. Let's look at this bottom one. Negative 2t and negative 3. You might think there's nothing in common here, but actually, if I go across this row, it's a negative 1. So my final answer would be 2t plus 3 times T minus 1. I like to put my make my T's like this in math so you know I'm not doing a plus sign. You might want to do the same thing. How do I know if that's right? What should I do? Well, we can just FOIL it out. If we FOIL it out, we should get right back up to there. Let's try the next one. So I'm going to cover up this one just so we can know where we're focused. I'll go ahead and cover up this other other one as well. Work on the middle one. So I need two factors of A times C that add up to the middle first. 
So I'm going to go 7 times negative 8 gives me negative 56. And I need two terms, two factors that add to negative 10. So let's think about what they are. We have 1 and 56. We have 2 and, that was good in my head, 2 and 28. 3 doesn't work. Mm, I don't believe 4 works. Oh, 4 and 14. Oh, I found it. There it is. 4 and 14. That's what I'm going to try. Let's see if it works. So if I do a negative 14 and a positive 4, that will work. That multiplies together to give me negative 6. 6, the 56. And it adds together to give me negative 10. So let's fill in our box. 7x squared is my first term. My last term is negative 8. Make sure the sign goes with the number. The sign in front of it goes with it. And then my middle terms I can put in either box. doesn't matter. Let's go 4x here and negative 14x here. And now we just factor each column in each row. So let's start with this column. And here I go up and I hit a positive number last. So I'm just going to pull out a 4. It's the greatest common factor between those two. This one, my greatest common factor would be a positive 7x. So this would be 7x plus 4. And then let's go across this row. 4x and 7x squared. The numbers don't share any common factors besides 1, but I can pull out an x. Then here, 2 would be my greatest common factor, and since the 14 is negative, it's going to be negative 2. So I have 7x plus 4 times x minus 2. I'm not going to FOIL it out to check it. I hope I did it right. I could probably FOIL it fast. 7x squared minus 7x, or 14x plus 4k. All right, I foiled it out in my head. It's good. Let's try the last one. So I need to have two factors of 5 times 21. So 5 times 21 gives me 105 to add up to 22. Boy, this one's going to be fun. Let's try dividing it by 5 first. So I have 5 and 21. That's not going to work. I know 1 and 105 is not going to work, so I'm not even going to try it. Let's try 105 divided by 3. I get 3 and 35. I don't even know if this one works. We might find one that doesn't work here. Uh, shoot. Anyone got any ideas? Hmm. Let's try... How about if I pause it <laughs> for just a minute and see if I can think this one out and see... Oh, geez. That wasn't that hard. All right. Divided by 15, and it's 7 and 15. That's the ones I want to use. So sometimes you have to just get out your calculator and try a couple things. Maybe I should have known that one. Math teachers really don't know everything despite what we try to tell you. So we're going to say first term is 5x squared. Last term is 21. And then I have a 7x and I have a 15x right here. And then I just factor out each column. So here, the greatest common factor would be 3. Here, the greatest common factor would be x. And this way would be 5x. Move my paper here. So 5x. And then this way is going to be 7. So I should have x plus 3 times 5x minus 7. Foil that out, 5x squared minus 7x plus 15x. Oh, why did I put a minus? See, it's a good thing I foiled that really fast. Okay, we're good. So that's our answer. Challenge question. The bell's going to ring in just a minute, so I don't want to keep going. But I want you to try this. Can you do the box method with our simple one? This is the one from our review. Try it. And then try this quiz. I'm going to pause this and put the answers to the quiz. So go ahead and try this quiz and see how you get. You should be getting about an 80% if you do it correctly. Okay, here's the answers. I guess I should put on my mic. Here's the answers to the quiz. So the first one, if you notice, wasn't actually... Didn't you have to use the box method. Just factor out the greatest common factor and figured that one out. Uh, two... Use the box method to figure that one out. 3 was also factoring out greatest common factor and then solving. 
4 was not factorable. So if you got stuck on that one, not sure what to do, it's because you couldn't do it. And number 5 is x plus 4 times 3x minus 1. If you go back and FOIL all these, you're going to get back to here, so you'll see. But this was box method that I used to solve number 5. If you didn't get at least 4 out of 5 correct, then keep trying the box method. You'll have plenty of practice on your homework. It is a little bit tricky to get the hang of it. Once you understand it, it's pretty easy. So have full confidence in you.